every day, every hour, every year. Water is there for us without a thought. But do we stop for a moment to think and hold it here? Water is nourishing, cleansing, and healing. We regard it as an infinite tool, ubiquitous and clear. It exists beyond our thoughts, always in a state of being, ready when we need it and there for our needs. Pool, shower, hydrant, ring, hose, fountain, toilet, sink. Ever stop to think. A human is 70% water. The earth is 70% water. Without a drink, we die in just three days. Meanwhile, we greenlight the destruction of vital supplies while driving fossil fuel cars every day of our lives. So I invite you, my family, to exit the mindset of water on demand and realize once and for all that you are water and water is you. Your tears are the rain. Your pee is the stream. Your sweat is the morning dew. Your emotions are the ocean. Your anguish is the crushing waterfall. Your love is the placid lake that gives rise to all life on earth. Masaru Emoto has taught us that water reacts to love and hate exactly as humans do, giving evidence to the truth that you are water and water is you. And so I invite you, my friends and my family, to shed the mindset of water as a tool, instead demand the strictest protection of the most precious resource in the land. Savor, give thanks, protect, and preserve. This is the attention that water deserves.
to Sullivan County in 2008, I immediately became involved in the fight against fracking, which was just beginning at that point in time. Marcellus. And I wrote letters, I went to meetings, I canvassed in Albany, I talked to farmers, and uh, it was so much work. And it was very, very frustrating. But it was only when I became involved with a political candidate who had literally switched from Republican to Democrat to run on this issue, and then the establishment threw him under the bus for no good reason at all. I was so frustrated, I was just despondent that there was such a lack of vision. And so I took my energy away from that fight, and I turned to the forest. I live in a hamlet called White Sulphur Springs, and the water is extraordinary, it's pristine. It is uh, really a mecca of water. And I literally got lost in the forest. I would go out for hours and hours and hours at a time and lose all concept of time. And I would sit by the streams and just listen to the splashing and the gurgling of the water. And it was, it was the washing away of whatever was wrong with my life at that point in time. The minute I walked into the forest and went down to the water, everything was good again. And I loved watching the way the light plays on the top of the waters like liquid jewels. And it became a sacred space for me, a very healing place. And as I listened and watched to the water, I said, this water just seems so joyful. It seems like it's playing. And it seems like it's talking to itself. And so I asked myself the question, is water communicating? So. Um, a kinship developed with the water. I really felt like there was a, some kind of a connection. And at this point in time, I saw it as a resource, like a rock or a tree. Um, uh, but I began noticing amazing things about the water. So one of the things that happens is after a storm, there's a big rush of water, and all the debris gets pushed to the edges. You know, it'll, it'll go along until the point it just washes away, and the same after a, uh, after a rainfall. In the waterfall, there's always kind of a dirty foam, and likewise, after that foam had swirled and swirled, it would be dispersed and put out to the edges, and I thought it was amazing that this is a way that water cleaned itself. So I began to photograph and videograph, the, the uh, vide videotape the water, and I began to find images of people, and sometimes full faces, half faces, of, of, of people and animals in the water. And so the next question I asked was, is the water trying to communicate with me or us? And if so, what would the message be? What would water tr be trying to tell us? So I didn't really know what to do with these questions. <laughs> so I left them for a future time when I could get more information to find some answers. There was one particular um, <coughs> spring-fed stream where I spent a lot, a lot of time. I don't know what it was about this particular stream. It was at the edge of a forest. And, um, and I would just sit there for such a long time and just gaze at the water. The way the light came in through the, the edge of the forest into the water was very special. And there was a time at which I just got a very strong sensation of gold. And not that there was gonna be gold nuggets in the river, but that the water itself was more valuable than gold. And again, I did not know what to do with this information, and so I tucked it away um, for a future time when I would have more information to go on in order to answer that question. At the same time, I discovered the work of Masaru Emoto. He was a Japanese alternative health practitioner who discovered that uh, our intentions have a very dramatic effect on water. He discovered that uh, through his photography of flash freezing water before and after intention, his work was based on the Japanese philosophy of Hado, H-A-D-O, which describes the vibration of a thing or a place or a person. And it states that beautiful intentions attract beauty and likewise ugly attracts ugly. Um, Hado correlates ex uh, very specifically to quantum physics, 
which teaches us that at the quantum level, everything is vibration, and we have the ability to influence that vibration with our thoughts and our actions and our words. In fact, Hado fits perfectly with the quote from the famous quantum physicist Richard Feynman, like likes like. At the quantum level, the lowest frequencies are at the bottom of the spectrum and related to the deadly de seven deadly sins, greed, avarice, sloth, jealousy, lust, pride, and anger. The very highest frequency is bliss or connection with the divine. In the middle of the spectrum is love. This quantum spectrum, not by accident, relates perfectly to the chakra system. In Emoto's grandest experiment, he invited 300 very experienced meditators to travel to Japan and participate in an intention experiment. Lake Biwa uh, had been horribly polluted for 20 years, making life unbearable for the community. The meditators repeated this following prayer 10 times. The eternal power of the universe has gathered itself to create a world with true and grand harmony. And as you can see by these pictures, <coughs> dramatic change happened instantly. It was the first summer in 20 years that there was no stench from the putrid algae, and it was considered a grand success by the community. Emoto's experiments included spoken and written words, music, images, uh, meditation, and water from sacred sites, and it could not be more clear that he had dramatic effect with his experiments. Emoto showed us that water responds to intention the same way that people do. It has a consciousness of its own, and the implications of this discovery are revolutionary. Wherefore art thou, gentlest peace of spirit? Dost thou exist in this place or anywhere near it? Catch me if you can, I implore you. So catch me if you Dr. Jacques Benveniste was a French immunologist highly respected in his field. He stumbled upon the discovery that water has memory and an electromagnetic frequency. For this discovery, he was vilified and cast out from the scientific community. He lost all of his funding and he spent the last years of his career in a shack with two dedicated research assistants and a robotic system. His findings presented an evolution of the system based on observable phenomenon which challenged the foundations of the scientific community to the core. His work inadvertently proved the efficacy of homeopathy. He passed away in 2004 of a broken heart. Upon his passing, Luc Montagnier 2004 Nobel Laureate for Discovery of HIV, picked up his work and developed an experiment that proved his theory. In this experiment, he diluted HIV DNA to the equivalent of one drop in the Atlantic Ocean so that there was no molecules of DNA left. It was only the memory. He then recorded the electromagnetic signal and sent that MP3 to a lab in Italy, which played this MP3 signal to a vial of water with polymerase, which is the building blocks of DNA, 
And after an hour, the original HIV DNA was completely and utterly recreated. Considering that the experiment was developed with very limited funding uh, and technology, the experiment is truly awesome in revealing the power of structuring water. Not only does it prove that the concept of homeopathy is valid, but since we are able to structure water with specific <coughs> frequencies, we are able to heal ourselves. As with Benveniste, Dr. Montagnier was cast out of the European scientific community despite his Nobel Prize. He lost all his funding and opportunities in Europe and he had been living in China for the past 15 years. He's 95. Mm -hmm. The casting out of these two highly respected scientists from the European research community can be perceived in one of two ways. First that the experiments were fraudulent, as if stated by Nature magazine, or that the work was challenging to the establishment on such a level that they were forced to cast them out. And if so, it would be the first time. Here is a water molecule. Looks a little bit like Mickey Mouse. Um, the two hydrogen atoms are very, very powerful and part of the real power of water. Uh, hydrogen is the most abundant atom in the universe, and because of it, all water in the universe is connected and communicates. Uh, every water molecule is unique, and water molecules like to be in families. They like clusters. They don't like to be alone. In unstructured water, as you see here, they are unable to cluster. The pollutants prevent them from forming bonds. But when we introduce structuring, the electromagnetic, mag electromagnetic charge allows the bonds to form, and then we get hexagonal clusters, like this one. Inside the cluster is what Gerald Pollack of the University of Washington calls the exclusion zone. The electromagnetic charge is so powerful, it expels everything. When the structuring is very strong, the clusters bond together to form lattices. And then the lattices form layers, which could be millions of layers thick. That's how structured water works. It's layers upon layers of lattices, of bonded clusters, which exclude, repel everything else. So then we have living water and we have dead water. Victor Schaberger taught us that the most perfect water arises from high altitude springs, like the Alps or the Himalayas or the Rockies. This is our template now for what perfect water should be. Sometimes it's so perfect, it'll kill you. So what kills water? I think we all have a couple ideas on that. <laughs> Negative emotions, plastic, pollution, fracking, all forms of radioactivity, chlorine, all the stuff we put in our municipal water supplies, chemicals, fertilizers, corporate farming, long runs through pipes, corroded pipes, pipes with 90 degree angles, and so much more. It's just a little start there. So then what structures water? New York City says, oh, we have awesome water, and you know what? It's fantastic in the reservoirs, but after it's gone through those pipes with all the additives, by the time it arrives, it's dead. How does nature revitalize water? tornadoes and hurricanes, evaporation, uh, freezing and thawing, waterfalls, infrared light is a huge one, and underground pressure from aquifers. The city of Portland, Oregon recently implemented a way to capture energy from their municipal water supplies. Brilliant, brilliant idea. But if they had introduced vortexing or uh, other forms of structuring water, not only would they never need to add anything else because structuring is anti-corrosive, um, but the people would actually get living water and the community would be so much healthier. So this then becomes an idea for uh, going forward and how we can really, really create a very healthy community through the municipal water supply. Structured water is also known as Exclusion zone by Gerald Pollack, crystalline water, fourth phase of water, living water, hexagonal water, revitalized water, 
and H3O2, an actual different chemical makeup from re regular water. <coughs> the qualities of structured water are that it's more viscous, more dense, more alkaline, it has a negative charge, it holds and delivers energy like a battery, it holds information, and it's free of contaminants. So we have the ability to structure our own water many, many, many different ways. I want to call it blissing. I think structuring is not a great word. So I'm going to reword that to blissing. Dr. Emoto taught us that we can structure with beautiful intention. Dr. Montagne said structure with frequency, Schaberger, structure with vortex, Pollock, structure with electricity, and Kumarov from Russia said structure with magnetism. There may be other ways. This is all that I've found so far. So it's dark in here, and I know you can't see, but this is the unit that I have. It's a tiny little thing the size of my thumb, and it's two forms of structuring. So it vortexes as it goes through, and then there's 12 diodes here. There's six magnetic pairs. So it's being structured through vortex and through uh, magnetism. And I just turn it over and I give it a swirl. And then it goes. I don't know if you can see that. You can, everybody can come up and try it and also taste some at the end of the show. Um, I've been doing this for about 10 days and the difference in my health has been dramatic. And I have already been structuring with magnetism, just magnet, like big magnets on a water jug. It does nothing compared to this. This is absolutely dramatic. I've been losing weight like crazy. Um, uh, unbelievable detoxification. I think clearer. My energy has completely changed. Um, I have no desire to eat unless it's like really, really good food. My sleep is better. This is just my, my experience. Magnetized water is primary healthcare in Russia and many, many places around the world. It's a huge business around the world, except the United States. And so I really um, recommend everybody get one. They're like 40 bucks on Etsy. So this is Gerald Pollack's work. Um, so he takes a hydrophilic material, that's a water-loving material, something like a, um, a sponge or salt and what, the minute you put the water next to it, it structures and it stays structured. And when you add sunlight to it, the amazing, it just, it just magnifies. So when you have the, um, the structured water is a negative charge, and then the unstructured water is a positive charge, and you can literally stick an electrode in the positive and negative and light a light no. bulb. It's a form of free energy that is right there for us. It's so outstanding. And this is one of so many ways that we can get free electricity with, um, with, with structuring water. And you know, this, I mean, everybody should have one at home. <laughs> you know, like how crazy is this? Uh, he's, he's another really magnificent um, scientist who's still with us today and has many videos um, and uh, really, really beautiful research. Um, most research has been done on magnetic uh, structuring. Uh, so it aligns the hydrogen molecules of the water into coherence. The stronger the magnetic field, the greater the alignment. Water is wetter, larger droplets, more easily absorbed, it flows faster, and it is anti-corrosive. So if you have problems in your pipes, even your arteries, it gets rid of it. Anti-corrosive, very, very powerfully anti-corrosive. The implications for farming and the experiments that have been done are absolutely dramatic. Up to 40% increase in yields and nutritional value in plants and animals using less food, water, and fertilizers with a dramatic increase in disease resistance. And this is just by adding a magnetic structuring unit. Mm -hmm. And um, there was uh, one experiment in California where they took a strawberry field that had a bricks value of four, and by the end of the season, the bricks value was 18. And it wasn't just the irrigated area that was affected, but a thousand feet in a, in a radius around the, where the structuring unit was. And so, so water wants to be structured. 
quite literally. It's, it, it's easily influenced to be structured, and it does not take much structured water to heal our bodies, our lakes, or the rest of water. When water is properly structured inside the human body, a person's life force grows exponentially, and I can attest to this fact. So the results for personal health, these are all from studies, mostly around the rest of the world. Detoxification, enhanced immune system, increased nutrient absorption, improved mental clarity, heightened athletic performance, longevity, it dissolves kidney and gallstones, and it clears out arterial and intestinal, intestinal plaque. And of course, I'm not a doctor, and I'm not recommending anything, so don't, you know, don't tell them that, uh, that I'm a doctor who recommended anything, but this is what's happening around the rest of the world, and that's why it's primary health care in Russia, and Japan, and I think probably China at this point, too. I can't read my notes, I'm sorry. So um, I'm gonna move on to Schauberger because I know he's next. Um, Victor Schauberger was called the Tesla of water. And can I just get a hand of anybody who knows of Tesla, right, Nikola Tesla? Is there anybody who doesn't know about Nikola Tesla? Okay, so they had the same lifespan from the 1880s to the 1950s. Um, they were both, uh, magnificent inventors and researchers who wanted to bring free energy to the world. And they were both vilified and hounded and destroyed by the powers who did not want free energy brought to the world. He was from a long line of foresters in Austria. And he declined going to college. Instead, he decided to let the forest be his teacher. And thank goodness he did because what he discovered and what he was taught by the forest is life altering for the entire world. He, his first grand success was building a log flume um, and at the end, from, from the top of one of the Alps to the bottom, right? Very, very long descent. And he copied the structure of a stream or a river. So the curves and the gradients and the dips in water temperature and um, the logs arrived at the bottom of the mountain completely intact with no destruction. And people were astounded. This had never been done before. And he was in great demand to build these log flumes all over the Alps. Um, and so he really, he really studied water. And he, he invented so many free energy devices out of water from the many different aspects of water, not even just one. But he, uh, he, he was insistent that an implosion is the force that we could be using. Implosion is life force. And this is at a time when explosion, like you know, after uh, it was Nobel who, who discovered dynamite, right? And, and Nobel, the reason he created the Nobel Prize was to make up for the destruction that he had brought, brought to the world. So Schaber, Schaberger taught us that implosion is the most extraordinary force that we have that really um, does not destroy the world. So unfortunately, um, the Nazis commandeered him for, uh, to build for the concentration camps, which was completely against his ideology. Uh, he had no choice. And while he was there, the Russians came in, stole all of his work from his house. So when he eventually got back, he was just absolutely distraught. He eventually came to the United States to uh, literally offer his work to the American government and he should have taken a clue from Nikola Tesla because they uh, confiscated everything from him and then he forced him to sign a document saying that, first of all, they gave up, he gave up his patents to the American government, second of all, that he would never ever write about water again, and if he didn't sign this document, he could not go back home. And so he signed the document, Americans got everything, and he died two weeks later of a broken heart. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, his son, uh, Walter Schauberger um, runs the Center for Implosion Research in England, so the work is being carried on, but so much has been lost. 
There was one machine that he created which not only structures water perfectly, but also creates all the electricity you need for a home. And it's just unbelievable that this work has been lost to us. So, uh, can everybody read the screen? Mm -hmm. Would you prefer that I read the quotes to you or play some music? <laughs> I play some music, you read. we survive. If we go against water, we perish. Now, I give all honor to the scientists who have proven this extraordinary information. But it's the First Nations people who have known all along that water is <coughs> consciousness. Wabinokwe was a Anishabe elder who walked 10,000 miles, the equivalent of the circumference of the earth, trying to raise awareness of the consciousness of water. And she just passed away about two or three months ago. And she is uh, one of the main influences of Standing Rock, um, and one of the people who brought the First Nations together around this very, very concept. And I honor her as one of my great influences in this work. And uh, I wish that her name was a household common word because she, her, that what she did was so extraordinary. Black Elk in informed us that we don't need to heal the earth. She will heal herself. What we need to do is to stop making her sick. And that is our only goal at this point in time. It's everything that we should be working for. And of course, 
Mini Wakoni, life, water is life, life is water, you are water, water is you. When I first asked the question, is water trying to communicate? It was 10 years ago. In my mind, water was a resource, a part of the landscape like trees or rocks. My perspective has changed so dramatically since that day. I honor water as a living, precious entity, as the source of all life. And I know that we are walking, talking, anxiety-filled bags of water. I make better choices in my words, my actions, my energy, because I know that bliss is the message of water. It's the top of its quantum spectrum, and it is exactly what, us, what, what water wants us to be. I learned that it's possible to escape all forms of depression or frustration by simply engaging in dance, laughter, play, volunteering, finding and living your purpose, random acts of kindness, and just living in a state of empathy and gratitude. All polluted water can be reclaimed. It only takes a small amount of structured, blissful water to change a very large area. Fundamentally, water wants to be structured. It wants to live, it wants to shine against diversity. Likewise, it takes a small amount of people to change the healing of water. And when humanity reaches a critical mass of people who are striving towards bliss and honoring water, there will be a tipping point at which water, the most quantum of substances will no longer interact with lower vibrations. It will literally expel everything negative the same way it expels pollutants. This last song is the Hope and the Pono prayer, which I invite you to join me in. It's one of the strongest prayers you can give to water. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you.
Thank you, George Outside Gallery. Thank you, Karl Marx, coming out for the beautiful, beautiful support. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Karl Marx Collective up in Sullivan County is a magnificent group of very talented, creative people doing amazing work, and I'm proud to call myself a member of this group. So, um, thank you so much. Anybody who wants to come up and practice structuring and taste some structured water, please do. My assistant will help you. <laughs> <laughs>